Getting back to lesson 12.8 in BC Calc, we were skipping example 5. We're going to take a real quick look at something very similar to the theory that we just talked about. What if we were not centered at x equals 0? What if we were centered somewhere else at x equals c? Take a look here at sigma. When you see x minus c raised to the n power, that means that you will be centered at C. You'll be converging around C, uh, a radius to the right and to the left. You can look at this picture that we have right here. If we've got the x-axis centered at C, a radius of convergence, we can go R steps to the right, that would be C plus R. R steps to the left, that would be C minus R. Our interval of convergence could be between C minus R and C plus R. That's what one possibility is for a power series. Uh, we could have both endpoints, maybe neither, possibly one of the endpoints working out. Uh, we also could have just one single value, X equals C. Uh, you can you know, pretty much see that that would be a, a very uh, boring kind of convergence. It would be trivial convergence. Uh, plug in x equals c and sigma would always have a zero. Um, so we never get divergence uh, in this regard. It, at the bare minimum, we'll always converge at least at x equals c. So we might have an interval. We might have just the bare minimum x equals c, or perhaps we could converge for all real values of x. Let's see how this could come into play. We've got one last example and then uh, another example that we'll just set up. Uh, but as we look at example six, let's think about where we're centered first. As we're looking right here, here's sigma n equals zero, x minus one to the n, all over n plus one to the second. This would be centered at x equals one. So we know bare minimum we will converge at x equals one. We might converge everywhere or we might converge uh, just on an interval. So just to help you out we're gonna do this ratio test. We're gonna say the limit is n goes to infinity and we're gonna take this term we're gonna plug in the n plus one term and n plus 1 plus 1 would become n plus 2 to the second. There's your n plus 1 term. If we divide by the nth term, that's the same thing as dividing by the reciprocal of that nth term. So we can see really what's happening. What did I just do? Essentially, I'm doing this a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Wherever I saw an n, I replaced it with n plus 1. And n plus 1 plus 1 became n plus 2. Rather than divide by this original fraction, we decided to multiply by the reciprocal. And uh, what you can see very quickly as we're proceeding is we're going to get some canceling. You can see that x minus 1 to the n is going to cancel here. There'll just be 1x minus 1 remaining. And then, of course, we still have this n plus 1 right here all over uh, an n. Oh, it's n plus 1 squared, pardon me. We have to fix that up all over an n plus 2 squared. Well, hopefully you can see what's happening here is n gets sufficiently large n plus 1 squared all over n plus 2 squared, uh, n behavior guarantees that that's really going towards 1. And that's going to leave us simply with the absolute value of x minus 1. The ratio test says that we will get convergence when that limit is less than 1. Well, we're going to be able to see very quickly that being less than 1 here in absolute value really means that x minus 1 is between a negative 1 and a positive 1. 
And now I'm going to add a one everywhere. And you could see that really we're going to be between zero and two. Now, I do want to point out one other thing that that we can be looking at. You've got to remember we're centered at x minus 1. But once you get to this point, once you've isolated the x minus c, you're always going to see that once you've solved for that, the radius is going to be here on the right-hand side then. So our radius of convergence is going to be a 1. If we were to make a number line, and if we were to be here at 1, this is where we're centered, you can see we'd move one step to the right, one step to the left. That's where we will get convergence. But we have to check endpoints. So I'm going to check x equals 2. We're also going to simultaneously check x equals 0. Now, stating the obvious, if we plug x equals 2 back into sigma, we're going to get something that's going to look rather interesting. You can see that we'd get 2 minus 1 to the n all over n plus 1 squared. And guys, that's just 1 to the n. And 1 to the n is just a 1 itself. You just have this thing here. If we were to plug in a 0, you can see that we'd get 0 minus 1 to the n. That's negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 squared. So we're left with two series that we need to investigate. What I do want to point out to you though is look at this uh, x equals 2 case. We're going to check the positive term first. And if I were to plug in 0, my first term would just be a 1. If I were to plug in a 1, I'd get 1 all over, well 1 plus 1 is 2, that would be 2 squared. If I plugged in n equals 2, I'd get 1 all over, well 2 plus 1 is 3 squared. Hopefully you get the idea, you can see what's happening. You know, if I plugged in a 3, the third term, n equals 3, I'd have a 4 squared down here. And I guess what I'm trying to show you is this is really the same exact thing as 1 over n squared from n equals 1 to infinity. Just wanted to point that out to you. It, they don't look the same, but they are. This is a convergent p-series. It's a convergent p-series. The fact that we're starting at n equals 0 really does come into play. Now, why are we checking the positive term first? Because now we can come over here and say this converges in absolute value. In other words, it converges absolutely from the x equal 2 case. Therefore, this converges regularly also. That's why we always want to check our positive term first. If we get convergence, when you come to this alternating series, you'll see that it would converge as well in absolute value. So this converges, and we had our other case converge to, what are we really getting at? Both endpoints are going to work we converge between 0 and 2. In other words, we're dealing with this second case here. It's just that both endpoints are going to work. To finish up, for example, 7, just want to show you that very often you might not be given a sigma. And this can get very intimidating. They'll write out term by term by term and then they'll write this very abstract nth term what I want to tell you is the nth term is what goes inside of Sigma you can then go ahead and confirm where you'd want to start it n equals 0 or n equals 
uh, in uh, one to make this uh, series uh, come around. But once you get here, then you can use your ratio test like you've been doing.